This is our XM7 rain speaker inside the computer. Um, this is the actual solid model file that we use to create the tooling. Um, every part of the speaker we developed inside of the computer, so we knew that all the parts would fit ahead of time. And that also could make it look cool and uh, sound good uh, all in one package. So one of the unique features of the speaker is it's got a removable grill. This grill not only acts as a cosmetic piece to protect the speaker and to look cool, it also is where our horn diaphragm is. This section right here is the actual horn diaphragm that comes down in the middle of the mid and uh, creates the coincident drive uh, horn speaker. So this, this grill section here we can actually remove from the speaker and in the real world it's just four screws that hold it in. By removing this grill it actually is self-fixturing so it can recenter itself when you want to put it back in. So this horn throat you see right here actually couples down into the inside of this speaker. Itself, we have a 7 inch mid-range driver and in between the mid-range driver we actually create the horn diaphragm. So what you see back here is a completely separate speaker. This is the, uh, the front plate, the magnet, and the back plate of the compression horn driver. So if, it's uh, about a little over a little bit over an inch of a titanium diaphragm. You can see it down in there, and it's what actually comes up through the center of the speaker. This horn diaphragm then goes down this horn throat and couples to the horn element, and that's what gives you your horn loading. This horn uh, flare angle that we've designed here is actually based on um, a design that we would do for uh, for, for pro audio, where you get a good response close to it. So you can actually listen to it as a near field driver, but also gives you good coupling all the way back to a couple hundred feet. So this speaker will sound the same if you're up close to it or all the way uh, far away from the speaker. And the, way the top clamp here is very uh, other very unique part of the XM7 design is uh, through our patented. Um, quick me disconnect mechanism, you're actually able to take the speaker and just remove it from the clamp. How the quick disconnect works is you have a, a male and a female post. So this would be your male post and your female post. And the speaker can actually just go all the way down and then quick, quick connect into the boat. By removing this, the audio actually comes with it. And if you notice, we have an audio connector down inside of the female portion of the boat um, where the audio passes through, a, a corresponding um, jack is on the other side so no matter where you have the speaker you can rotate it 360 degrees all the way around <clears throat> and still have audio connected to the drive. On the underside of here if you don't have a tubular tower a lot of boats now are coming with cast towers where there's nothing tubular to mount your speaker to. Um, some of the Malibus, uh, Taigas and uh, Ski Centurions now have cast towers where there's just a plate that mounts to the boat. So what's unique about our speaker is we actually built the mounting plate into the driver. So on the underside here you can undo these two screws and there's a mounting plate to go to the cast towers built right into the speaker. So this part right here would mount to the boat and then you've got your post that comes off of the mount on the cast tower. That's where your clamp would mount your boat. So this section right here would mount to your cast tower and then this is all you would see hanging off of your boat is uh, the quick disconnect at this point here. And then the speaker can just simply remove from the tower at any time take it with you. So this is how the clamping mechanism works. We're just going to do a close-up of the clamp all by itself. Um, this clamp is able, as I talked about before, and it's all the way down position here. You're able to clamp down to 1 and 7 eighths inch tube, which is some of the smallest tubes in the marketplace. There's very few boats that have any tubes. They're not a very, it's not a very viable tower with something smaller than 1 and 7 eighths. So if you look at this curve here, we actually spent a lot of time on the curvature of how this works. So if we go and we drop a 1 and 7 eighths inch tube, I'll actually go and just draw one here in place. You'll notice how we've got just a little bit of area here. So the curvature of each one of these two profiles is designed to perfectly clamp in four different positions on the tower. We've actually found that surface area of metal to metal is more important for a stable cast mount than having any kind of knurling or teeth on the uh, clamp mechanism itself. The problem with teeth is what you do is you cut down on the amount of surface area that's actually touching the metal and it doesn't ever actually dig into the metal. It's just small tiny little sections of surface area. By having what we are dual curve mechanism of um, having these two contours that come together you notice we have a very long contact patch in each four sections here that are spaced out far. So when we go to one and seven eighths inch we actually have a very nice contour of what's happening here. We go all the way up to our larger size edit this part right here, edit sketch, we take this up to our two and a half inch tube. Two and a half inch tube is substantially larger than one seven inch. It doesn't seem like it, but when you go and actually draw it, it is. You'll notice as we bring this out, our curve comes out and actually matches the contour. It gives us, still keeps that four points of contact, but gives you a very large wide contact patch. 
that's what's important to having a clamp that can go steel metal on metal and not move at all. So this gives you tons of clamping force right here and then it'll slightly flatten these areas out and give you maximum surface area.